Good morning and welcome to the Breakfast Biscuit for Wednesday, August the 10th. We are now in double digits in August. Can you believe that? And again, only three months till some cooler weather. I hope you had a good night's sleep and welcome to the Breakfast Biscuit. It's called, He Won't Do What? All caps, W-H-I-T. He Won't Do What? With a big question mark. And the subtitle is, One of the Things I Love the Most About Jesus. One of the Things I Love the Most About Jesus. And it comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 42. So let's be grown-ups this morning and talk to each other about the realities of life. Uh, sometimes uh, I'm just barely hanging on. Does that surprise you? Shouldn't, especially after the last year or so. And I dare say, I bet that's true of you too. And maybe you're just barely hanging on this morning, spiritually, mentally, physically, emotionally, financially. Maybe you're just barely hanging on. One of the things I love the most about Jesus is that he doesn't do to people what the world does to people. The world, if you're barely hanging on, the world will crush you and take your stuff. That's how it works. However, Jesus will cause a bruised reed to be strengthened and a smoldering wick to be reignited. Did you hear that? Jesus, rather than crush you and take your stuff like the world does, will cause a bruised reed to be strengthened and a smoldering wick to be reignited. Let me turn you on to a whole new source of great uh, insight. It's called gotquestions.org. It's great. And uh, I enjoy it. I bet you would too. Listen to what they had to say about this passage. A bruised reed he will not break and a smoldering wick he will not snuff out. When Matthew wrote these words, he was quoting a prophecy from Isaiah 42. This prophecy pointed to the actions and demeanor of the coming Messiah, now revealed as Jesus Christ. In the prophecy, the bruised reed and the smoldering wick <clears throat> refer to the spiritually, physically, or morally weak. A reed that is bruised may be damaged, but it is not irreparable. A smoldering wick may be about to lose its fire altogether but it can be reignited. The disfigured man whom Jesus met in Matthew 12 was a bruised reed, and Jesus gave him strength and cured his shriveled hand. The woman taken in adultery was a bruised reed in John 8, and Jesus saved her from stoning and forgave her sin. Jairus was a bruised reed, and he mourned his daughter's death, but Jesus strengthened his faith and raised his daughter from the dead. The woman with the issue of blood in Luke 8 was a bruised reed, and Jesus restored her to full health. The disciple Peter was a bruised reed after his denial of the Lord, but Jesus gently and lovingly renewed him to fellowship after the resurrection. Over and over in the Gospels, we see Jesus caring for the bruised reeds of the world. Jesus understands the bruised reed he was bruised for our iniquities, it says in Isaiah 53. In other words, he was bruised on behalf of those bruised by sin. Those who come to Christ, he will not despise. They have this promise from Jesus. God sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. Rather than trumpet his healing ability far and wide, Jesus warned the crowd not to mention his miracles to anyone else. Jesus' instructions for secrecy here prompted Matthew to quote the ancient prophecy, bringing Isaiah's words into new light with the revelation of the Messiah's identity. And here's our passage from Isaiah <clears throat> concerning Jesus 600 years before the time. Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one in whom I delight. I will put my spirit on him and he will bring justice to the nations. He will not shout or cry out or raise his voice in the streets. A bruised reed he will not break and a smoldering wick he will not snuff out. In faithfulness he will bring forth justice. He will not falter or be discouraged till he establishes justice on the earth. In his teaching the islands will put their hope. So, if you're just barely hanging on this morning, let me tell you about my Jesus. He doesn't come crush you and take your stuff because he can like the world does, like unbelievers do. 
like some who purport to be believers do. Jesus restores, strengthens, and takes those who are barely hanging on and helps them, including you. <clears throat> and I would suggest that we ask him, shall we? Father God, we come to you this morning recognizing our frailty. God, we confess to you at times, uh, it seems we are just barely hanging on. And we want to thank you for our Jesus, who will not break a bruised reed or snuff out a smoldering wick. Father, we ask for the power of Jesus to be manifested in our lives this morning to strengthen us morally, physically, mentally, emotionally, in every way, for your glory and for the blessing of your people. God, we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So may the Lord bless you and keep you and cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. And remember, as always, I love you. I'm praying for you. I'll see you right back here bright and early tomorrow morning. God bless you.